Hi guys, it is sunset over the end times in more ways than one here. Closing out this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in the paradise of uh, the big cypress swamp. I'm in some sort of panther refuge in the middle of the big cypress swamp in the southwest corner of Florida here on this absolutely gorgeous winter day about 75 degrees on this spectacularly beautiful Tuesday January 22nd 2019 so I am uh, enjoying the government shutdown here in this national park campground this absolutely spotless manicured litter free the cleanest national park campground I have ever seen in my entire life and pretty much the emptiest uh, here enjoying this uh, shutdown so I guess it's free uh, as far as I can tell this campground is free and so I'm sitting here having a doomsday margarita at sunset and just mulling over today and the past couple of weeks in the state of the planet so as you're probably aware your old depressed collapsitarian doomsday tourist is down here in South Florida uh, here in the winter of 2019 enjoying what is left of the paradise of South Florida while I still can that uh, the Everglades and the contiguous big cypress swamp here in the southern tip of Florida perhaps the single most imperiled uh, ecosystem in at least in the US from uh, climate change and specifically sea level rise but of course good lord there's so many things so many threats facing the Everglades and the Big Cypress Swamp. It's unbelievable that it's still here at all. And so I am down, I've been coming down here my entire life. Uh, literally 20 miles from here is the very first memory I ever recall in my life. I'm getting ready to hit 60. And this is when I was less than two years old. It was the summer of 1961 before I turned two years old and my mother, uh, I remember her being flabbergasted when I was talking about this, but she remembers it clearly when my very first memory of my life uh, was being down here. We took a a uh, little boat trip down the Turner River, which is now a a designated Florida canoe trail. I'm just figuring out whether I can uh, relive that memory. But anyway, the Turner River down here uh, east of Naples, Florida, off of Highway 41, the Tamiami Trail. You can still take this trip amazingly. In 2019 but in 1961 before I was two years old the first memory I ever have imagine this is being in a rage and what I was so enraged about we were taking this little boat trip this Seminole Indian was taking us back into back up the Turner River this absolutely beautiful cypress draped Blackwater River and my mother and my sister and brother uh, were seeing all of these animals, namely these turtles. I mean, I could see the birds. I remember uh, always seeing all of these beautiful 
you know, all kinds of these wading birds, these long-legged, long-necked wading birds. I'll get back to this in a moment. But what I could not see were the turtles, or all these turtles sunning themselves on the logs and on the bank. It's the turtles and the alligators, and these things kind of camouflaged into the background, and everyone was pointing out to me, but my eyes... You know, it's the first time I'd ever experienced anything like this. I had never been in this. Hell, I wasn't two years old yet, so my eyes weren't trained to focus on this. And I just remember getting madder and madder as uh, everyone, like, it's right in front of your face. And finally, they came into focus and it was, as I say, the, the rage turned into absolute pleasure. And it was probably on that very trip to the Turner River, 20 miles from where I am uh, sitting having this rant 58 years later. Uh, it's, it's probably the, the reason that so much of my life has been devoted to coming to beautiful places like this, and it probably has a lot to do with why I think the southwest corner of Florida uh, is one of the most gorgeous places, certainly in the U.S., if not on the planet. It has always been one of my favorite places, and just watching the unbelievable tragedy unfolding down here on every single level it, it's 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 truly heartbreaking to see what's going on and, and just trying to wrap my head around the fact that all of this is going to be gone in a few decades if if we again i'm sure people always jump on that decades i think it will be um, uh, a few more decades before South Florida, this uh, the Everglades and the Big Cypress Swamp, and fortunately the city of Miami will literally be underwater. Uh, and, and just trying to wrap my head around that, it's just, uh, it, 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 it's just, you, you can't do it. And... So anyway, I'm down here uh, in my in the autumn of my life, as it were, revisiting uh, where I've been coming, you know, since pretty much the day I was born to uh, just have one more chance to enjoy this. And it, what I have found today is, if anything, uh, by, by the time the sea level rise gets here, there, there's nothing that's going to be left to go underwater. I mean, the land, this beautiful landscape, is going to go underwater. But by the time that happens, at least all of the fellow earthlings that we share the corner of South Florida with are going to be long gone. I mean, they already are long gone. Here I am. Uh, 58 years after my first memory, still looking for the animals. And unlike, uh, imagine that, unlike 58 years ago, I'm not seeing any. Uh, I've never seen anything like this or not seen anything like this in my entire life. It's been, I think the last time I was here, I'm trying to remember, it was about 15 years ago. And, and I remember 15 years ago just how f fewer animals and birds and turtles and everything that, that I was seeing. But good God, uh, com compared to that, this is what is, you know, I think the official term for this is baseline bias or something like that. So also, one of my memories of this place from my childhood is my mama, uh, uh, Elaine Mitchell, uh, who I've uh, mentioned before in Rants. Well, she actually grew up 
in Fort Myers. Uh, she was born in 1920 in Georgia, but when she was six years old, uh, she moved to Fort Myers. My grandfather was the district attorney for Lee County um, in, in 1926. So anyway, they were, <clears throat> she was down here uh, living in Fort Myers in 1926. She lived right down the street from Thomas Edison's uh, winter home. She was about a mile uh, from the Caloosahatchee River, and there was not one house between her and the river a mile away from her. But anyway, so she grew up. She moved down here in 1926, and when Fort Myers was a little town, and so she used to uh, tell the story about, you know, she got braces, so I guess she was, what, 12 or 13, so this would have been the early 30s, during the Depression, uh, my, my mother got braces, well, there were no orthodontist in Fort Myers, Florida in the 1930s. So uh, my grandfather, every about once a month, had to drive from Fort Myers to Miami so she could visit the orthodontist. Anyway, she said it was, they would make about a monthly trip down probably the fairly newly opened Tamiami Trail, uh, U.S. 41, uh, between Miami and Tampa, and which crossed the, you know, before Alligator Alley was built, that the Tamiami Trail was the only link uh, across the wilderness of the Everglades. And the stories that she would tell from when she was a little girl or a, or a young teenager, I guess, is how she would really look forward to this drive uh, across the Everglades to Miami. Then they would spend a couple of nights with uh, my family over there and then drive back. And what she was, I remember her telling me about when I was a kid just being flabbergasted by the number of all of these wading birds. You know what I'm talking All of these egrets and herons and wood storks and ibises and roseate spoonbills. I don't remember, I don't think there were ever flamingos. There might have even been a few flamingos. Uh, but I certainly, the roseate sp spoonbills were always my favorite. The sandhill cranes, I mean, good Lord, how many kinds of these beautiful wading birds were lined up and down the, uh, it wasn't a natural waterway, it was the, the canal, you know, from where they dug out for the fill to build 41. So there's this canal that runs all the way along the north uh, side of US 41. It's one of the major reasons for the ecological collapse of the uh, Everglades, one of the unintended consequences. But that's a whole nother route. But even with that uh, unintended consequence, even that environmental disaster, when I was coming up in the 60s and the 70s, we would come down here on vacation, and it was unbelievable uh, how many, uh, just the sheer number of these beautiful wading birds just up and down this canal. I mean, you just drive down 41 uh, with a, this never-ending show spread out before you. You could stop anywhere. You know, they had all these little airboat rides to see the birds and all of this stuff. And it was always one of the joys uh, of, of, of coming down here. Is one of the main reasons we came down here. But my mother would tell me, you know, looking back, you know, in the 60s, she was saying, if, if you think that there's a lot of birds now, you should have seen it, you know, in the, in the 1930s. 
and, and she was explaining to me how that there were just flocks of uh, of these birds of all kinds and you got to remember this is after the big uh, egret slaughter of the early 1900s you know the, the audubon society that was started because of this snowy egret plume uh those damn hats for those clueless moron women uh, that's why the Audubon Society was started in the Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary, which is only about 15 miles due west of me, right into the setting sun, is where that big uh, Audubon Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary, you know, saving the last of the egrets. So even when my mother was coming up, was 30 years after the big slaughter of, uh, of those birds, but, but she would tell me, uh, uh, you, you know about just just how just just everywhere you looked, not just right in the canal, but all through uh, the Everglades, just just rolling down uh, Highway 41, as the sign says, just, just through this unbelievable wonderland uh, of all of these beautiful birds. So. Her vision of her childhood was radically different than mine, but since I wasn't around in the 1930s, I still thought it was an unbelievably fantastic show in the 1960s and 1970s, although she was telling me then, you know, call it uh, 50 years ago, that there were, there were half the number of birds as there had been uh, when she was a kid and you know and she was just wondering where all the birds had gone and so anyway uh, I, I've been coming back here periodically over my life I get fewer and fewer chances just of where my life has taken me so every time that, that I've been coming down here, there, there have been fewer and fewer birds, but n absolutely nothing like today. And you got to understand it's January. I mean, the leaves are off the trees where you can actually see uh, a lot farther into uh, all of the waterways and the Everglades. You know what I'm saying. You, you, there, there's a lot more landscape available to your eye to look. Well, guys, I just drove from Immokalee to Everglades City down uh, Highway 29, which also has one of these canals alongside it, which used to be more full of birds than, uh, than Highway 41. You know, it's kind of like a back road, this canal uh, along Highway. It's 44 miles, I believe, from Immokalee to uh, to Everglades City in 44 miles today I saw a grand total of two egrets and then I came back up the Turner River Road which is a which is just a dirt road leading back into the middle of nowhere I'm at the very end of Turner River Road at the Bear Island campground if you're trying to figure out where I am well the Turner River Road you know it used to look like a, a, a damn David Attenborough special it's 20 miles from 41 to here 20 miles I saw in 20 miles I saw three egrets and one great blue heron so uh, in what is that in 65 65 or 70 miles of driving today uh, in, in, in early 2019, right through the heart of the Big Cypress uh, National Wildlife Preserve, whatever they call it, I have seen five egrets and one blue heron. In other words, I've seen about the number of big wading birds that I see 
uh, whenever I go to the hike and bike trail in uh, in uh, Austin, Texas, in the middle of one million people. So we get here to the middle of nowhere, and the little dog and I, we took an hour hike. I'm guessing probably about three miles that we took a walk. We got out of the damn truck, and, and when we went on this nature trail, actually it was an ORV trail, if you really got to know. So we get back there, the little dog and I, are taking about a three-mile loop, and in three miles of walking through the Big Cypress Preserve, we saw one egret and one, I think it's called a limpkin looks like a uh, kind of like a little brown ibis in one hour of walking uh we, we we saw two wading birds and uh but but it, it's it's not that's not all we did not see the other thing that we we did not see I have not laid eyes on a small mammal since I left Arcadia, Florida. I'm about probably maybe 90 miles south of Arcadia now. I don't, I, I don't know. So I know when I was in Arcadia, there were raccoons and armadillos at least getting hassled by the raccoons at the Peace River campground and seeing these armadillos. Well, guys... Uh, since I left Fort Myers, Florida today, uh, I have driven, you know, to Immokalee. That's, a, that's about 50 miles. So I have been, I have driven about 120, 130 miles since I left Fort Myers. I have not seen one roadkill. Not one roadkill. From Fort Myers to right here, not one dead armadillo, not one raccoon, not one possum. Uh, I mean, absolutely, the road has been clean. Uh, that stretch of 29 from Immokalee to Everglade City without one dead armadillo, raccoon, or possum. My God, guys. Uh, they have completely disappeared. And so, uh, you know, Sancho and I are on this hike, uh, walking around and, you know, in the sand and, and all of these, little, these muddy watering holes and stuff. So we're in a damn panther refuge, right? So uh, I decide, so when we would get to these muddy uh, watering holes, you know, it's, it's the dry season. I, I've always enjoyed, you know, looking for animal tracks. So I was hoping to see a panther track. Well, there were no panther tracks. We never saw a panther track, but, but, but by about the third mud hole that, that I was at, I, I, I'm starting to saying, hey, man, it's not just no panther tracks there are no animal tracks no animal tracks it used to be if you came down here 20 years ago guys i i, I mean you would see tracks well, certainly uh, of raccoons possums armadillos otters uh you know all, all of these things i have not found and as I say, about three miles of walking uh, in the middle of a panther refuge, in the middle of the Big Cypress Swamp. Now, I did see two times deer tracks. So at least two deer have come through here. Uh, I, again, it's kind of like looking for wading birds in downtown Austin, Texas. Y you see a hell of a lot more uh, wild small mammal tracks in the middle of Austin, Texas, in the middle of one million people that, that I am seeing. Out here. It's, it's literally become a biological wasteland out here. Uh, and, you know, I'm thinking, and then I'm thinking, well, what the hell 
line did I cross? You know, from, from Arcadia to here, there is clearly something has happened to just a number of my fellow earthlings. And then it, uh, and then it struck me, I said, oh yeah, I have crossed the Python line. And, and, and I've heard, you know, I, I went and heard this talk when I was here in Florida last year by this uh, biologist who studies the Everglades. Unfortunately, I could not pin him down for an interview, but a major part of his talk uh, were, were these goddamn pythons, these, the, you know, these invasive species, these pythons that, you know, that either escaped or more likely clueless morons let go their pet pythons when they got too big to take care of. And now, I guess we have the Burmese python and now the African rock python. This fellow was telling me, and I just flat out did not believe him. I just did not believe him. He was telling us that uh, by, by his own research down here, right, right around where I am, that these goddamn pythons have obliterated 90% of the small mammals uh, in, the, in the Everglades, in the Big Cypress. This one species, of, and this one invasive species has completely annihilated uh, what he claims is over 90% uh, it says, you know, the, the, the main casualty has been small mammals, uh, you know, raccoons, possums, I guess armadillos, otters, bobcats, I, I guess they can eat baby deer, uh, they can probably eat baby panthers. I mean, th th this is no joke, and, and I'm wondering, you know, three miles Sancho and, and I walked today. We never flushed out an armadillo in South Florida. My God, uh, it, it used to be, you know, when I went to graduate school down here in the early 80s in Florida, you could not walk. And then I lived in uh, Home of of Florida, a little north of Tampa for three years the last three years of the 20th century, my God, guys, you could not walk a quarter mile in Florida uh, without these damn armadillos. A hell of a lot more armadillos in Florida than I've ever seen in Texas. There is an absolute plague uh, of these armadillos. They're uh, all over dead in the road. Uh, I have not... Uh, I have seen one live armadillo since I got to Florida two weeks ago, and that was in Arcadia. I saw a live one. I have seen maybe one or two dead armadillos uh, on the road since I got to Florida. Uh, it's, it's, it's just absolutely bizarre. I remember having a rant last year in northern Florida about where the hell is the roadkill? And now I'm down here and there, down in here in southern Florida, there is no roadkill. Uh, it used to be the only way that, that you could really see the wildlife of South Florida was dead on the side of the road. Uh, good God. And then, of course, my, my windshield tally for bugs. You know, I started out of Austin, Texas, one of my first uh, videos, you know, talking about I'm going to do, I'm going to wait for the first bug. As far as I know, guys, I've probably driven, what, 1,500 miles at least in the last two weeks. As far as I know, I have not hit one bug uh, on this windshield since I left. Now, I know some of you are going to say that it's uh, January, Hambone. Uh, well, guys, it is 75 degrees today. You hear, you can probably hear the ch the crickets are starting to chirp now. Plenty of crickets chirping, so I know there's some bugs out there. Uh, what what I'm saying is it's not too cold for bugs, but they they sure as hell ain't on the windshield. 
Uh, I have never had to swerve. Well, I had to swerve from that, from keeping to hit that one armadillo in Arcadia. I mean, not a what? Not a rabbit. I have seen some squirrels. I have seen squirrels. You should see Sancho looking at me when I say squirrel. No, the squirrelies are gone to bed like that. There's no squirrelies awake right now. I mean, other than squirrels and one armadillo and two raccoons, that is my tally uh, for two weeks in, in, in the state of Florida. And... You know, I came down here to enjoy Florida while I still can and like so so many things in my life. You know, I come down here looking for joy and all I do is get more and more and more depressed the more time I spend uh, out in nature. Uh, the more depressed I get, it's like, you know, it's, it's like living in a, in a damn museum now, guys. Uh, and, and, and I understand that if, that if anyone ever, if any child ever came out in, into the woods anymore, no wonder they're, they're bored out here. There, there are, there are no animals out here. I mean, it's still beautiful and all that. But, you know, what, what the, at least half of the joy, if not two-thirds or three-fourths that I had as a kid out there in nature was, you know, experiencing my fellow earthlings. And, of course, you know, we've all heard of this famous uh, study what is it that two-thirds of the wild animals in, on this planet, just the total number of our fellow earthlings, have been obliterated off the face of this planet, you know, since I used to come down here as a child. And, I, and by one estimate, they're saying in Latin America, 89% of our fellow earthlings obliterated off the face of the planet. Uh, since uh, I was, uh, what, 10 or 15 years old. I honestly think in Florida, Jesus, guys, uh, I, I would say 95% uh, of our fellow earthlings, gone. Gone. And uh, so here I am down here in, in Florida enjoying it while I still can, uh, before it all goes underwater, and uh, instead of joy, I'm just getting more and more and more depressed. Thank God for uh, thank God for margaritas in plastic Starbucks cups. If it wasn't for tequila in Starbucks cups. I would really be uh, fucking depressed. Anyway, I got to figure out what I'm going to do for dinner out here in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I think I have one more Ambien. I didn't, I didn't get away with any Clonopin from Gainesville, but at least I got away with one Ambien from Fort Myers raiding my, uh, my brother's... Uh, prescription drugs and uh, so I'm going to go have another margarita eat some dinner take an Ambien and maybe let the last cricket in South Florida lullaby me to sleep and I would encourage you to come down to South Florida and visit the Big Cypress Swamp and the Everglades while you still can before they're already gone. But now that I'm here with a first-hand report, they're already gone. We're fucked.
This is your old depressed collapsitarian doomsday tourist, more depressed than ever now that he has finally gotten back to paradise one more time to revisit old memories. Thank God for memories because uh, that's all I have of my fellow earthlings in paradise here in this beautiful sunset over the end times. Bye, guys.